It wasn't gold and silver the miners were after in this boom town, and it may surprise you to learn that what they were finding led to building the longest tramway in the world at that time. We'll show you where it's at, coming up on Ghost Towns and More. In south-central Wyoming, at the base of the Sierra Madre Mountains, Indians and fur trappers would gather during the summer months to barter and trade. The area was filled with tents and temporary shelters during the mild weather months of the year, so the place was called Camp Le Grand. It was later named Encampment. In the late 1800s, prospectors reported finding sources of copper but in 1897, a sheep herder discovered a vein of copper so rich that the landscape was about to change forever with the beginning of a new town. As the new settlers poured in, the area took on the name of Grand Encampment. But in 1897, the post office required the name Grand be dropped, simply calling the new town Encampment. Partners formed a new mining company, and business soon thrived. Promoters of the new town expected it to be a western industrial stronghold, and for a time it certainly was. It had all the makings of the usual mining boomtown, and copper was king. Well, it was all copper mining here. Uh, that was all the driving force behind the town's existence as well as having the smelter here in town. So that, that's why encampment exists where it does because you have uh, the smelter that is going to process all the ore that's coming up out of the mountains here. With large profits coming from the mine, the town was built into a thriving community. It was a rather busy town, and you can see that reflected in all the old photos from during the mining uh, days, as well as reading the newspaper articles. Uh, but there were plenty of saloons, of course. It was really meant to last, not, not just as a temporary tent colony or anything like that. It was built to last. They planned parks in the town, which this museum is currently on as part of a town park. They planned, a, a, well, they built an opera house and uh, they planned, you know, nice wide streets. Uh, so it was a town that was meant to last, but it was a mining town nonetheless, and it was busy. Uh, uh, there was a lot of commercial activity that went on here. A uh, number of lawyers set up office here, doctors, pharmacists, dentists. There was, uh, of course, the early building of churches. So, like I said, very active. One of the town founders, Willis George Emerson, was one of the primary stockholders in the growing mine and was instrumental in the creation of a 16-mile tramway that transported ore from the mountains to the smelter in town, the longest in the world at that time, 
made by the Riblet Tramway Company. They built this ambitious 16 mile long aerial tramway, longest in the world, completed it in less than nine months in 1902. The tram had 840 buckets that could carry as much as 700 pounds each. 80,000 pounds of copper ore were being shipped to Colorado every day. As the town grew, so did the population, swelling to over 5,000. And with it, the problems caused by troublemakers soon emerged as well. One of them was Butch Cassidy, and the town decided to protect themselves from one of his raids. When the town armed itself for the raid from Butch Cassidy and his gang, uh, it was very valid for them to feel like he was going to come and raid the town. After all, he was quite prominent in this area. And in fact, the hole in the wall is not that far away from here, really. Uh, so they handed out shotguns to uh, the, the, uh, some of the town residents uh, to defend the town and the payroll of the town. Well, he never showed up. Some of them speculated that he didn't show up because he surveilled the town and realized that they were armed and ready for him. Well, that's not the reason. He was actually here the whole time, sitting and drinking with everybody in the saloons here. The peak years for encampment were from 1897 to 1908, but the heydays were short-lived. An unexpected downturn in the price of copper sent shockwaves through the town industry, and property values went into freefall. Some investors of notoriety lost everything they put into the mine. Uh, one person in particular, very famous, Buffalo Bill Cody, uh, he invested $70,000 into a mine here, and uh, it was his best friend, uh, Beaver Powell, that owned it. So invested $70,000, uh, visited town, was interviewed in town by all the Wyoming newspapers, um, and he ended up losing every single penny that he invested into it, all $70,000, which was a lot of money. As if to add insult to injury, the large smelter caught fire, and then people began to leave. As with many ventures that win big, there are often those who lose big. 1908 was the year it all came to an end. Well, the downturn was caused by, well, a downturn in prices of copper, okay? Um, a series of fires at the smelter, and then what gets every mining company eventually? Swindling your stockholders. So they swindled their stockholders, made a fortune, and ran. Even though the main driver of the town's economy was over, the town hung on, becoming a locale for cattle and agriculture. But what sets encampment apart from many semi-ghost towns of its kind is what keeps it alive today, the annual events and activities. Each year, the historic town of encampment hosts events such as the Winter Carnival, Jamborees, Cowboy Gathering, Living History Day, and Copper Days Festival, all for the enjoyment of those who come to enjoy the fun and celebration. Best of all is the site where the preserved buildings of the former town are found with what is known as the Grand Encampment Museum. Here, visitors can see historic buildings from the peak years of encampment and go inside to see the preserved artifacts and furnishings of the past. There are displays and historical photographs as well as a section of the old aerial tram.
There are also many exhibits, antique cars, machinery, and countless other items to see and enjoy during your stay. The scenery is beautiful and is well worth your time to stop by when you are in the area. It, it, it's a beautiful place that people want to be.